Welcome back to another What A Shout. Whoa, what a weekend we have in Prospect. Brought to you by The Racing Post and our sponsors, Bet365. Dave Orton, back in the chair for you. I'm absolutely delighted to be here this weekend. We'll talk about whether you should be certain places later on in the show. We've got a very interesting guest for you as well. However, the racing is absolutely superb. All about being on the town more, isn't it? Whether you're watching from afar, were you hoping to be there? Let us know. Get your questions in for the panellists. Mm, my goodness. Will you be in Ireland watching the Irish Champion Stakes as well? On Sunday, what a card we have for you. These sizzling Sundays, they keep going. And in France, of course, we've got the Vermeil and we've got the Grand Prix de Paris as well. Arc coming up for you as well. Plenty of clues along the way. Let's get to our guest then. Wow. Never accuse us here at the Racing Post of a North-South divide. Another Yorkshireman joins us. It is the voice of the North. I think we can call him that. Bobby Beavers joins us. Bobby Beavers. Good morning. How are you? Happy days. Friday morning. Thanks for joining us, Bobby. I'll tell you what, with a name like that, you must have enjoyed university. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously, my, my name is, is, is Robert, but it, it basically came about as, as a bit of a nickname that, that stuck. So, so everybody calls me uh, Bobby now. Uh, apart from my mum, I'm, I'm still Robert to my mum, but everybody else, it, 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 it's Bobby. I think even my kids are calling me Bobby now as well. You know, as opposed to dad or daddy, it's becoming Bobby. So <laughs> everybody calls me apart from mum. All the viewers... Images in their heads going absolutely crazy. Graham Robway joins us back in the panel. A good weekend for you last weekend, wasn't it? Nap straight away, dream of dreams. Let's get that out of the way. Adulation, take the floor. <laughs> yeah, well, well, that race worked out perfectly, didn't it? And, you know, not, not to say it wasn't all the more sweet. Uh, uh, watch, watching dream of dreams just stride away. Um, from, um, of course, hello, Hume Zane, who was, um, was uh, our guest, Adam Ryan's big hope. And he was fairly confident, wasn't he, that uh, hello, Hume Zane would, uh, would have a bit too much pace for you. You weren't Dreams. having it. You weren't having it. But it didn't work out but that way. You came into the studio last Friday, and I think you said on air as well, and we were saying, you said, I'm not having a good run. It's, it's amazing how these things can change, isn't it? You have actually been on a red-hot run, haven't you, since? Yeah, it's really weird. <laughs> you have that good weekend on Saturday, good day on Tuesday, Monday, good day on Tuesday, and you're like, oh. It's all turned around, and I don't seem to be doing anything different than what I was doing before. No, exactly. With your radars on, your radars on. Talking of radar, one man that's doing an Emily Pankhurst up at Doncaster. Can't get rid of him up there. Pat Cooney joins us from our sponsors, Bet365. Are you in the hotel up there, Pat, are you? I am indeed, yes. I'm in the Hilton Hotel. Other hotels are available, but it's about a furlong after the winning line. So, uh, as they say in the, in the, on the stage, I'm here all week. Other shows are available, but you're mad if you're going to miss this one. Let's have a look exactly what's coming up for you. We're going to be looking at the hot topic. Wrote itself this week, didn't it? All about the town more. Spectators one foot in, ten steps backwards. Bobby Beaver's giving us all the updates there. We'll be looking at the racing clues in the past week. What did you make of Enable? Should a price have contracted for the arc? We'll be previewing all the big races, giving you the big calls. And don't forget, your weekend winners, there'll be naps. If you want to sign up to our sponsors, Bet365, now's a good time to do it. We have a referral code for you, Shout365. Minimum deposit £5 for up to 100 bet credits. Good luck. Terms and conditions apply. Right, now let's get straight to this week's hot topic. Usually we go into this with a little bit of fun and japery, but um, it, it, it was bad news, wasn't it? Let's face it, for racing, and in particular Doncaster on Wednesday, racing once again this summer on the tabloid front pages. Why? Because spectators come on back in. A couple of thousand were supposed to walk in. They did. They enjoyed the day. Halfway through the day, they were told Doncaster the following three days back behind closed doors, just restricted to owners. Now, this leaves Doncaster with a potential quarter of a million hole to fill, numbers-wise. Lee Motter said in the paper this week, he said, the numbers aren't looking good for COVID, the numbers are looking increasingly bad for racing. Luckily, the pilot schemes at Warwick later this month and indeed Newmarket for the Cambridgeshire meeting, they are still looking good. Public Health Suffolk came out, the Mayor of Newmarket said, we hope that people come and enjoy. We support it all the way. We know it's down to common decency and just being, you know, straightforward, watching where you're going, have your masks on, all that sort of thing. However, get back in your cars and don't go into the town. Now, Bobby Beavers, this main reason why we've got you on, Bobby, of course, you were there presenting. So you basically, Bobby, how does it feel? You're the first presenter back with a crowd. I believe you were also the last as well, weren't you? Yeah, we were just saying that, weren't we? Uh, because I, I presented on Midlands Grand National Day at Utoxita, and then I was there on Wednesday for, for day one of, of the St. Ledger. And to, to be honest with you, obviously getting there actually on the day, I was only allowed in the green zone. So I, I had to 
uh, go through the inside entrance, you know, near where the goffs is, uh, to, to have my checks and be able to walk onto the course. I wasn't allowed anywhere near the public. And in normal circumstances, it'd be very busy. You'd be walking around, etc., talking to people, previewing uh, the races. But for what I could see, and, you know, I think people's pictures on social media spoke volumes, and that was everybody was behaving themselves. There was social distancing. They were constantly using the hand sanitizers that was put out around the course. I saw a tweet saying that they felt so safe uh, going outside and being at Doncaster Racecourse. They felt safer at Doncaster than what they did in the local supermarket down the road, which I think speaks volumes. And I, I really want to praise the whole team uh, on town more because they worked so hard for this to happen, for spectators to return in, in, in a safe environment. They was working hour after hour to make this happen. And I just feel so sorry for them because they, they just worked tirelessly hard they, they made sure everything was in place. It was so safe. You could see the pictures, everybody respecting the rules. And I spoke to a few people that day who also said that people was respecting the rules. There was no trouble what you could see. And I, do, I just feel genuinely sorry for them. And, and for me personally, you know, I saw this as a huge step forward to normality, allowing the crowds back in. And obviously when the news broke, as you said, halfway throughout the day, that this is now not allowed, spectators not allowed in. I, I, I generally felt down and, and I felt sorry for, for Doncaster for all the hard work they've they've put in. Um, obviously, the flip side is is that you know when they're doing the testing, if, if the R rate had, had had gone back up in Doncaster, they would have pointed the finger at the race course because they say, well, because they allow spectators in, that's why the R rates increased here in Doncaster. So, but in all, in all fairness, Dave, I, I, I just generally feel sorry for, for Doncaster because they put so much hard work in, but. What is important, I need to express, they, they set the standard and they showed, not, not just racing, not just the UK, they showed the world that we can return safely, our sport can return safely with a crowd. That's good to know, isn't it, Bobby? So, Pat Cooney, let's come to you. You were also there and you put my hat on. How, what was the vibe, Pat? Well, I mean, what does this mean for punters? What, I mean, it, 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 there was cash betting going on again, wasn't there? The feeling was really, really good. And then, oh, whop, bang, wallop. There's no, I mean, deflating doesn't cover it, does it? Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, I was here yesterday. As I say, I think there were maybe two bookmakers there catering for any owners who were having a, a nominal bet. Um, but, I mean, we were lucky, Dave. We were offered the opportunity to sponsor 14 races over the four-day meeting. And that, that that was a real plus for us and delighted to do it. And we were doing it on the basis, wouldn't it be great to have the crowds there? But the crowds were really a bonus, the fact that we could sponsor these races uh, and they would be on the terrestrial TV and so forth. Where it was a huge benefit to us. So we would have much preferred the crowds there, the atmosphere and the talking points would have come out of the meeting as opposed to being, you know, the, the lack of crowds being the story itself. So desperately sad for Doncaster. But I, I, would, I agree with Bobby, you know, it's been so well organised here. So much effort has gone into it. And indeed, I've been at other uh, sponsored meetings for the company at Perth a couple of weeks ago. Newbury and Newmarket for the July meeting and they've put their heart and soul into making sure all the protocols are in place so as soon as the government says yes I'm sure I'm sure it'll be very very well organized if and when it does come back let's hope it's very soon so Pat you mentioned atmosphere so when you walk on course and you see images like this is this sign like a road sign no shouting no cheering I mean the snowflakes have won haven't they what's going on well, that was an amazing thing to see. And um, I, I was there, as I say, on, on the Wednesday, a taser won out uh, Bet 365 Nursery and the uh, connections were roaring him home from two furlongs out. But uh, a degree of common sense, they weren't they ejected from the uh, the premises immediately afterwards. Uh, the, the fun is still there. But uh, as I say, if, if you're an owner, I mean, it, it must be so, uh, so demoralising to have your big moment in the sun and you're thinking, well, I can't go here, I can't go there. We saw it on the television, but uh, at least you get an nice trophy from the sponsors afterwards yeah if you were there on wednesday and you saw bobby presenting or indeed pat let us know get your comments below the panelists will read your feedback let us know how you felt if you were there let's bring you in g here this isn't the first time this has happened of course to racing it was supposed to happen on the first of august wasn't it at glorious goodwood they had less than 24 hours to cancel everything having got ev all you know the course all mapped out and everything right decision wrong decision we 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 don't know, do we? But you know, you've got to to trust the the government, haven't you? I mean, they are taking the, the all, all the advice from all the scientists or whatever, and mm. and and it, you know, they're doing what they think is right, and 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 if it saves just one life, then it's definitely worth doing. 
Of course, it has much bigger ramifications for the sport and, and for the, the finances of the sport in general and the courses. How long can the courses last without, uh, without well, spectators? This is, this is the problem, isn't it? Not only uh, have uh, Doncaster not managed to get in the, the, the fans that they wanted for the rest of the week, but it's also cost them yeah. a lot of money to prepare for it. Uh, the same with Goodwood, when they, it cost them a lot of money to, to prepare for that pilot that, that they never took off. And a lot of these tracks are reliant on t ticket sales yeah. and uh, drinks and, 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 and food and, and the sales are on course to survive and they are not making the sort of money that they need to so to survive like you say how much longer can we go on I mean, there's a story wasn't there last week i think it was about them talking about the cheltenham festival being highly unlikely to be played out in front of a capacity crowd next march and they were, they were, that is a long way away that is next march how many tracks are going to make it through to them they're going to be able to go on right the way into next year should this go on that far let's pray that it doesn't let's pray that we can get fans in at least if we can get a few thousand in yeah then um, that would cover a lot of meetings wouldn't it because yeah. most meetings don't attract more than a few thousand apart from the big big ones yeah and that would allow a lot of these courses to survive but if the courses aren't making the money then the money doesn't go into the prize money we had adam, adam ryan on last week who was saying you know really the prize money needs to start getting better now when we can't get people in the gates the prize money's not going to get better which then affects the trainers it's just going to affect the whole industry it's a complete nightmare isn't it yeah it's a complete nightmare we'll end it on that time to turn that frown upside down <coughs> why because the racing has just continued a pace our oh, sport is the best in the world isn't it g and what a weekend it was last week also we've seen i'll tell you who i want to start with not so much an able lot's been said about her and the art we always talk about that what did you make a logician on the opening uh, on the second day i should say on the town more one to ten shot look we, we we saw he had four legs and an engine but where do we go with him john gosden's got all the races covered hasn't he what would you do with him yeah it's a shame isn't it that we haven't seen more of him this year i always remember that great quote i can't remember who said it but someone once said oh you know big horse big problems you know a logician is a real sort of monster of a horse isn't he but lovely headache to have yeah he just you know he's got these he's obviously not been able to get the track this year as he's come back uh, with that run, uh, Donny, and, yeah. and really we didn't learn anything about him because the runner-up uh, pulled too hard to have any chance to put it up to him. But where do we go with this horse? What are we going to do with him? I mean, you know, they've got Mishriff, you know, haven't they? they've got obviously Enable, they've got, you know, all these fillies, they've got everything lined up. Would it be Breeders' Cup? Is that the sort of base you might go with him? He looks like an arc horse, don't he? You know, you, you They're think, not oh. going to run him in that, are they, with an able? <laughs> Surely same ownership. They won't. He does look like an arc horse. Yeah, they won't, but if, if, you, if, you, if you sat there and said, which horse is, is an arc horse. That long straight, long shot's really going to see yeah. them. But they won't run in there because they want an able to win it. Mm, talking about an able, let's go to Bobby with this. Then. You've, we've, all our what shout followers have heard what we've been saying about the arc and love and an able, for example, Pat and Graham and myself. What did you make of an able? Obviously, it was, a, it, was a, it was a cakewalk, as expected. Will she win? Is it heart over head time for you, Bobby, in the arc? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting one with her because obviously I'm a big fan of love, you know, if she turns up in in, in the arc as, as well. And and I think what I saw last Saturday in, in the September 6th at Kempton, you know, it, it was a great performance by him in terms of it was just a walk in the park. It, it was easy the way, the way she, she won the race as well. She set herself to say, right, I'm going to go over there to France and I'm going to win. A, another arc. It was it was great to see, and it's a shame as well that we're not going to see her uh, on a, on a British race course again. I was there when she's won Yorkshire Oaks. It was fantastic uh, to see, but she's been an absolute superstar uh, mare for connections. Fantastic chance, you know, fantastic chance of winning the arc. But what I want to see as an exciting racing enthusiast myself, I want to see enable and love going at it, stride for stride, neck on neck, you know, battling all the way uh, to the line. If we can get wins, a fantastic... Who wins, Bobby? Who wins? Who wins? I'm... I... Silence enable, is definitely... Enable, 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 enable. <laughs> That's it, so yeah. it is heart over head enable. time, isn't it? Okay, fair yeah, enough. Thanks, yeah. Bobby. Uh, so, Pat, let's go to you for this. Uh, Haydock, it was... It looked a wide open sprint cup didn't it uh and and the fav went and did it graham robway was absolutely all over it we won't come to him on this we know what he thinks about it was there anything yeah. else you might take out of the race pat i mean is it all now about the champions day for him does he go there and just win that does golden horde who maybe went a little bit too soon on the far side hello you met a load of trouble what do you take out of the race 
Well, I just think you just have to start falling in love with Dream of Dreams. I think he's always been a talented horse, but a, a bit hot and cold in terms of performances. But I think two things have made the difference to him. A gelding, and he's had three runs since he's been gelded, and they're all high-class levels of form. And Asheen Murphy seems to get a tune out of him more so than anybody else. So he's the now horse, and I expect him to turn up at Ascot and win. Oh, I'll tell you, it's 1-1, him and Hello Yumzane, isn't it? <laughs> we know what Graham Robbie's going to say on this. He just thinks he'll turn up and win as well. I think Hello Yumzane might well bounce back. Uh, let's talk about uh, France, the Prix de Moulin. Six runners, all Group 1 heavyweights. Some didn't turn up. All the panel last week went for Siskin, didn't we? Before we talk yes. about Persian King and Pinatubo, what... <laughs> What about Siskin? What are we going to do with him? Let's talk about the flops, maybe, if you like. It was a flop, wasn't it? It was, but I didn't fancy him when he went into the stalls. And something happened, like, before the race, and he, was, he got a, a little edgy. bit sort of edgy. New and, market all over again. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and he is a bit of a king-going type, isn't he? I, I just wonder if, if you need to keep a lid on him a little bit. It'll be interesting. He's definitely got the talent. Can he bounce back? Probably. Yeah, needs to keep a lid on it. Pinatubo. Persian King. I mean, it was amazing, wasn't it? That Andre Farb's runners were the two out, sort of rags in the betting. Shows you what sort of race it was. Persian King has long promised to do that. Pinatubo, let's concentrate on him, though. It's what our viewers will want to know about, I think. Well, I thought it was an amazing performance by him. I thought, without doubt, the best horse didn't win the race. Pinatubo was, was brilliant, I thought, the last two furlongs. It, it, the ground that he made up in the last... Furlong and a half. I, mean, I, I sat there and I was watching it with the wife, and I just said, "God, that horse can run," because he, he just just took off. So QE two. I I think he'll be unbeatable. I, I think I think he will be unbeatable from now on. I, I, that that to me was the best performance uh, in a Group One this season, ahead of Mahafa, ahead of all the winners. I know he didn't win the race, but he should have won the race. He, he should have won the race easy. So Mahafa's gone for the mile division, but this is the next start. Do you yeah. keep him in training as a four-year-old then? Well, I don't know. It depends what he wins or, or does not win this year, doesn't it? If he doesn't pick up, um, you know, another Group One this year, it wouldn't surprise you if they kept him training. But if he goes on, then dominates the mile division. I don't think they'll keep him in training. Barring accidents, Graham Robway, Pinatubo, never going to be beaten again. Right then, race time previews. Oh, we cherry picked them for you this weekend. They're everywhere. Group ones are plenty. But three thirty-five, it is the final classic of the season. Yep, it come up quickly, didn't it? But it's the St Ledger, a mile six. We were due twelve. We're now down to eleven. Pat Cooney. Yeah, absolutely. English King goes to France instead. That's over a mile and a half. That was always very much in the act. But I'll tell you something about this St Ledger trip, Dave. I actually walked the course last night. It's a mile six and a half furlongs. And I tell you, it is a long, long way. It's very unforgiving. You pop out the stalls, you walk half a mile, you take a long bend, and then the straight's almost five furlongs. Um, you know, I barely made it over the line. They had to put the screens around me over about 15 minutes afterwards. <laughs> so, so I look at the likes of Pile Driver, and he, he's not gone the trip. His dad was a sprinter. You know, and you think, God, you know, he's got he's got a, a Mark Johnston horse that will probably be up there making the running. The Aidan O'Brien horses are going to go forward. He's going to have to prove he stays for me. And having walked the course, and I'm not walking it ever again, I can tell you that much. I've got even more reservations about him. Pat Cooney, he's a loony. <laughs> <laughs> that works out rather well. Mile six, I'm going to walk that. I don't think I'll ever walk that ever. I probably won't be allowed up there ever again, but uh, I, I won't walk it. Um, so, pile driver, he's, he's got the best form in the race? Just. Just. Yeah, just. I don't think he's miles, miles clear. I think that Hookham is, is right with him. Uh, on <sighs> not love for Hookham, isn't there? Yeah, and um, I, 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 I'm not so much worried about the trip because, I mean, Bobby will probably know this, being, um, you know, spending so much time in Doncaster. That, that one mile six and a half furlongs, as, as Pat's already said, it takes a bit of getting. And, and this track, over a mile and six furlongs, the St. Ledger trip at Donny, it really does help if you are held up off the pace. You know, they go a good pace usually, and it is a good place to come from well off of it. And we yeah. know that Pile Driver will be coming from right at the back, won't he? Look at his win yeah. at York. He was held up in virtually last and then made his ground up nice and smoothly to go and away and win well. I think that m most tracks in Britain suit front runners or prominent runners. The one mile six furlongs on St Ledger trip at Donny does tend to be the opposite. Oh, nice. So is Hookham the tip? No. <laughs> so what is the tip? I think Hookham's got a huge chance. I set you up perfectly for that. Now. You've just batted it right back at me. So if Hook so Hookham's a player, but not the tip. Uh, I think he's got a huge chance. But um, just at prices, I, I prefer um, Joseph O'Brien's runner, which is called Galileo Chrome. Chrome. Yeah, yeah. I, I keep sort of trying to call him California Chrome, isn't it? It's, 
You know, you spend so many times watching all these races yourself, don't you? Uh, but he was so impressive at Navin last time, won so easily. Yeah. And uh, if there's one thing we're starting to learn about Joseph O'Brien, he's done really well in these staying races, hasn't he, as a trainer so far. I look at him, he's got a, a nap Took hand. Took out the park at Doncaster this Absolutely. week. Absolutely. Yeah. He's already won a Melbourne Cup. He's got a nap yeah. hand in the Irish St. Ledger. And um, I just think Galileo Chrome's improving. Stayed on really well at Navin's really stiff test yeah. there as well. Mile, four, four, mile five furlongs. Yeah. I think the step up in trip will suit him. So. He's, he's a horse I really like as well. I'm definitely going to back him. I think Mohican Heights is, is a completely forgotten horse. He's bred to win a ledger. If you look back at his run at Ascot uh, when he made his comeback, when Simcott's horses, his, his trainer Dave Simcott's horses were all out of form. He ran really, really well. Forget the derby. He was held up in a really, really messy race. The fact he's not been seen since suggests that perhaps not all right. But I backed him for the derby. Actually. I did. Yeah. I did. Apparently, he was working the house down. Jamie Spencer, who, who was off at the time, not quite fit enough to return to race riding, was telling it all and sundry. This was working the absolute house down. You look at his pedigree, he's bred to win a ledger however I think he'd come up just short I'm going to back him I'm going to back Galileo Chrome but the one I've got on top is Santiago I think that they just win these races don't they and now that um, now that uh, you know Frankie on it's Scorpion all over again he's much more straightforward than uh, this I'm, chap I'm going to run out just an interesting thing from a preview perspective because I'm fairly sure that although the uh, first string Aidan O'Brien runners obviously have a <laughs> higher strike rate. I'm fairly sure that you'll make more money back in his second and third strings in these races. So you think Dawn Patrol should be a bet, do you? Well, I think either of the, those two. He's got two mm. others, isn't he? On a line through Dawn Patrol, Galileo Chrome's got a great chance. So there is collateral form everywhere. He's been waiting in the wings. Bobby Beavers, what wins the St. Ledger? I'm all over pile driver, uh, to, to, to be honest with you. I agree with everything uh, uh, Graham just said there, you know. But what, what I like about pile driver, and this is interesting, he always surprises you. The way he wins his races, they write him off. Look at this 10 to 1 for the great Voltager. Very impressive performance. It was 18 to 1 for the King Edward VII. He got the job done. So he's, he's always written off, obviously, this time, very, very different. Very close in the betting with Santiago. The story will be fantastic. You know, go for that story. If he wins, it will be phenomenal for William Muir and, and Martin Dwyer as well. So for me, pile driver to keep on surprising. I respect what Pat says. Listen to what Graham says as well. I think he will get the trip. We know how he's going to be run. He's going to be off the pace. Martin is going to hold those reins. And then he's going to say, you go, my son. Go, go, go. And then when he goes, he's going to fly downtown more. And I think he's going to get the job done. But I'm going to chuck in one at an each way price as well. I think it's going to be a typical Mark Johnson horse making the running or thereabouts subjective is each way for me uh, for Mark Johnson, Joe Fanny, Nayef Rover and a screamer last year 12 months ago. Looks like he's heading over to Ireland. Subjective is at a fairly big price each way for me, but Pile Driver is the one. Bobby Beavers, no one knows more about the town more than him. Get on Pile Driver, says he. Right then, across the Irish Sea go we. It's the Irish Champions weekend and the feature race itself is at 4.10. Big headline this week, G. He goes. The best turf horse in the world. You don't think he is. You think that goes to a navel. So are you going to get him beaten this old Gaeth or? <laughs> well, he's not that good, is he? As we said last week. No, I mean, this is the sort of race he just wins, isn't it? You know, it's a, it's a fairly small field around Leopardstown. He's going to go off and blast off. And this is the sort of race uh, that he's hard to beat. And I mean, the reason I'm questioning him whether he is going to be the best horse in the world, wherever he is the best horse in the world, is can he do it when he doesn't get this small field, this little easy lead that he seems to be getting going off on his own? Like, I love to see him do it in an arc. I mean, if he could go out and dominate an arc in the way that he's dominating these smaller field races, I just don't see it happening. He couldn't do it last year. Yeah. But nevertheless, this is the sort of race he wins, and he will be hard to beat, but I think the price is wrong. We spoke on the show last week, didn't we, about the four races that Gaeth could have gone to. I, I honestly didn't think he'd be going to this, mainly because I thought it might come too soon after York. That shows what a corner they believe he's turned this year. Uh, it's, it, look, it, it, everything looks right. It's on the inside track at Leopardstown. It, it, that's gonna, it suits front runners, you know, quick and off the bend. Get them at it. Yeah, and it's this this track will suit him probably better than York did yeah, last time. Absolutely, but my worry my, my worry about the race going into it was Team Bally Doyle. They've got three in the race. Okay, right. They've got Magical won the race last year. Deeper addition, despite the fact it's a smaller field. She's a 
cracking mare, but she's come up short against Gaeth last time. I don't see the form being reversed. The, I guess the fly in the ointment for him would be Japan. He got beaten by him in the Eclipse, but he has sat fresh since. He didn't go to York, did he? And try and repeat win in the Judd Monty. Could quite easily have done that. The tactics will be fascinating, won't they? Surely he'll just be sitting on the corner and trying to have another crack at him. I guess if you're betting Gaeth, that you're hoping that he really can take this racing now. Well, I, I expect you're going to be, uh, you know, here in uh, Gay F. Charlie Abbey thinking the same as John Gosden does often when an able runs against these battalions of um, Ballydor race, uh, horses where he just says, oh, I just hope there's a clean race here. Yeah, you know, well, we well, all know what he means. Yeah, but there's know? only six runners, aren't there? I mean, you know, they've got Armoury in there as well. Will he be the spoiler? I'm amazed that they've not put like a sprinter in there or something, you know, it, well, to try and get him at it. And it would have been fascinating for the public. We've to seen see it happen well. before in this race. Exactly. Know, years ago. Exactly. They, 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 so are they, just, are they just barring down to Gaeth? I'm not, I'm sure that's not happening, but I was surprised. Sostas is in the race as well quick line on him he'll enjoy the better ground he's yeah. a top notcher isn't yeah, he yeah he's got a good turn of speed as well isn't he? Which, yeah. which which could help him um yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not entirely convinced Magical can't beat Gaeth here. You know, I don't think there's lows between them. And, so you are trying to get him beat. And I am going to be trying You're to get him You're taking that beat. Enable line, because she always just nearly beats Enable, doesn't she? So. Yeah. I, 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 don't get me wrong. If Gaeth turns up and performs in the way that he has done all season, he'll win. But Magical, we know she's probably going to turn up and run well. And she's around sort of six to one. She's a bet for me. Let's bring in the Beavers here then. Now, Bobby. Are you looking at Gaeth and thinking this is just a this is just a simple one for the Ackers? He's going to go and win, or is Graham Robbie talking some sense? I think it's one for the uh, for, for the Ackers here. I think he's going to go and get the job done. You cannot fault his performances this year whatsoever. He's he's undefeated this year as well because we need to take out the uh, the win over in in, in Maidan as well. I think the, the way to play this would be to go for the same forecast that was in the Judmont International last month on the Knavesmire. Go for Gaia for the win and Magical to finish second. You can't rule out Japan, the, the pick of uh, Ryan Moore. Uh, third in the clips behind Gaia, so Gaia has already beaten him. But for me, Gaia is the one to be. Gaia will win. Odds on, so go for the forecast. Magical to be in behind. OK, yeah, it does look like a forecast race, isn't it? All right. So Japan, Pat Cooney, he's a funny horse, isn't he? And, and you know, the start of his career, everyone fancy him as a three-year-old to go and win the art. Uh, do punters really latch onto this horse, or have they jumped off now? Yeah, there was plenty of money in for him for Royal Ascot, but even then, Connections did have the reservation, oh, but he'll he'll come on for the run. He's one of those horses that I, I suppose you'd put him more in the he's been a disappointment tray than he's been a success tray, for sure. I can't split Japan or Magical in this race as a, a real opponents to the favourite. I think Gaeth, I think it's just straightforward. William Buick will have him handy, and he'll just go for gold, you know, three furlongs out. And on that basis, I think Sotsas might be the one to pick up the pieces. Colin Keane is a good booking for the horse. And I just think he might just sit off the pace and come roaring through. And the connections of Jean-Claude Rouget was keen to come to here for this race. So I'm looking at Sotsas as being in a race where there's no real value at all. Sotsas maybe as a betting without the favourite market. That might just appeal to me. But what a cracker. Mm, yeah, well, it is a cracker, absolutely. So if, if, if betting Gaeth is not your thing, who's going to fill in the forecast space? There's lots to choose from. Right then. Big calls it is. We know you love this section. I do too. This is going to be a feisty one, I think. Bobby Beavers will give you the floor. Get something off your chest, man. Thank you very much, Dave. Yeah, so for, for myself, I, I really want to see, you know, crowds coming back on onto a race course. You know, from a, a personal perspective, it'll bring quite a lot of my work back. Doncaster was fantastic on Wednesday. They, they set the standard. They show with all the protocols in place, that we can uh, do this safely. And uh, people saying as well that it was safer to go to Doncaster on Wednesday than it is to go to the supermarket or, or down the local pub. But looking at the, the bigger picture completely, with what's happening at the moment, there's a lot of, of people not working in the industry because of this. People are still uh, furloughed. So for me, I really hope we get back to some form of of normality, which will allow people to work in our great sport. Uh, you know, I think it's going to be a case that we need to wait to get that vaccine. So praying that the vaccine is is on its way sooner than later. Please let that be the case. But for me, I just want to say, as, as the whole of the industry, I, I, I want to see us back to work and, and return to, to some form of normality. And I, I want it to go back to, to how it was. That that is That is what I want to say. Here, here, echoing everyone out there, no doubt. Uh, Graham Robway, um, 
change tack. You, I'll give you the floor. Your big call, your big shout this week. What is it? Yeah, I mean, I, I obviously do the, the racing post um, race day live. And just over the last couple of years, I've had lots of emails about, <laughs> about Ryan Moore this, Ryan Moore that. And yeah. don't get me wrong, I am the first person to, 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 to say, look, this is probably just punters look at, talking out their pocket. He's the first jockey in a betting shop, isn't he, that gets bashed? At the, yeah, he is. Yeah. But for me now, having looked more closely at it over the last year, I think they might have some substance here. I'm not convinced that he is riding to the same level that he was maybe three or four seasons ago. I think if you look at the statistics, they will back it up. I think from sort of 2013, he was 21%, 22%, 24%. He had a great year, I think it was 2017, was a 24% strike rate. Last three years, strike rate's gone down significantly. It was 18% three years ago, 16% two it's years ago. It's all about ago, numbers, this show, isn't it? And 17% last year. Now, you can't tell me the quality of horse that he's riding has declined over that time because he's... He's the stable jockey for um, Aidan O'Brien, for the Cormor operation. Michael Stout. All, all the best rides he still gets. And, and we were talking with Adam Ryan last week, and he said pretty much Ryan Moore could have any job in the world he wants. He's considered... Well, he called him a genius to us, didn't he? He likened him to Pigger. You know, we went out with Adam after the show, and he, he, he was talking about Ryan quite a bit, wasn't he? And the, the, the praise was, was glowing. Yeah, he's considered the best jockey in the world, pretty much, it seemed that way. That's but, the tag that he's had now for that last five years. having watched him a few times this year, I, I, I'm far from convinced that he's riding at a, a very, very high level that he was a few years ago. I think Oshie ago. Murphy has really put the cat amongst the pigeons. I think it? definitely Oshie Murphy. Obviously, he's taken over on Dream of Dreams last two Runs completely turned the horse inside out. The horses now probably should be unbeaten this season. I, I think if Oshie Murphy had ridden him at Ascot, he would have beaten Hello Yum Zane, in which case Dream of Dreams would be unbeaten this season. And I, also other bits and pieces that sort of feed into the Ryan Moore thing is that I look at the, the, the Epsom Derby last... He could have ridden the Epsom Derby winner three of the last four years. Without doubt, Aidan O'Brien's won it three times in the last four years, and and and, and Ryan Moore's been on the wrong one every time. He's not time. been on the front runner. That's been the problem. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, if you compare he, his decision making there, he's got the choice of all those Cornwall horses. He made the wrong decision three times in a row in the Derby. Uh, he's riding. He should be riding them most of the time anyway. He's got a better insight into that stable than most other people. You compare his decision making to, to Jim Crowley, for example. You look at Jim, the way Jim Crowley handled his situation at Hamden Al Mactooms. I mean, Ham, if you, Hamden Al Mactooms, Jim Crowley is almost always on the right one. He hardly ever gets it wrong. He, he knows those horses inside out, and he, he he hardly ever gets it wrong. But yet, for me, Ryan is not on the right horses. He's making the wrong decisions. I just don't think he's at the level he was. Tell you what, those comments on YouTube is going bing, 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 right down now, aren't they? That's what you call a bee in your bonnet. Pat Cooney, I think you've got to talk about a jockey as well, potentially. Yeah, I watched the uh, the Pinatubu race last week, and uh, you know, with uh, James Doyle on board, and a few people saying, oh, he gave it a bad ride or whatever. But the underlying thing I took from it was the winner was ridden by Pierre Charles Boudot, who knows his way round the track like the back of his hand. And I've always thought, you know, if I've got a horse and I'm going abroad with it, when in Rome, do what the Romans do. If I had a horse running at Saratoga, I'd rather book Irad Ortiz Jr. If I had a horse uh, running on, you know, the, the west of coast, I'd probably have Mike Smith. You know, I, I'd be very much like that if I had a horse run in France, Christophe Sumion. If I had a runner at Chester, I'd put Franny Norton on it. So I, I would have taken that sort of, did he get a bad ride or not, out of the equation. And I would have booked Super Sumi for Pinatubu. Nothing wrong with James Doyle or William Buick. But I'd like hometown advantage wherever I go. It's about the pace of the races in, in France as well, isn't it? Yeah. Which I think was the, the key point there. So basically, Pat Cooney saying, when in Rome, don't be a Viking. Uh, right, so I'm, go I'm, gonna, I'm also going to keep on the jockey vibe. And um, 8.20 at Newcastle this week, there was a horse called Arnold that was, it, the whole country backed it, basically. Um, it, it, if you didn't go back and have a look in your race replays in your members section and see what I'm on about. I was hearing from the guys at Sky, for example, my phone started lighting up. I backed it as well. Uh, they've never had so many emails, they don't think. Twitter went absolutely crazy. Trained by Ann Duffer. I've, so I have spoken to Ann about this. I gave her a call. I didn't just want to throw her under the bus. And uh, she didn't hold back Ann, let's put it that way. She's from the School of Hard Knocks and she tells it how it is. It, 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 she, Sir Royston French is on this horse, Grove. Uh, have you seen it first and foremost? No, certainly I haven't. No. Right. The horse needs to basically be produced on the line. The week earlier at Newcastle, Joe Fanning got there too soon. It got pipped. If you look in the form book and you look at his last two wins, the comments in running said lead on line. He has won earlier in his career when he went clear. He's just not that sort of horse anymore. My problem was not necessarily with the ride, and it was not necessarily with 
with Twitter going berserk, although some of the things that were said were bang out of order if you were one of them out there. This is a yard that is desperate for winners. And Anne was obviously upset about the whole thing and and some of the comments that came her way being on Twitter herself. Royston French, you know, he's trying to launch his career again in Britain. He's got four kids and a mortgage to pay. People were saying it's bent and all that sort of thing. Now, understandably, it, 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 it can see why people are shouting that at the telegram because the BHA stewards did absolutely nothing about this. We always see over jumps something that can't raise a leg and then runs on when the race is all over under an amateur jockey or some of the young guys getting pulled in for schooling. Sit in Ireland all the time. They go down to Shaftesbury Avenue, try and get it reversed. Some of the times they do. Depends who you've got on your side. However, the BHA had an opportunity to tell the punters why and stop this rot on Twitter. Stop Royston French from losing his confidence. The horse has to be ridden like that. I know that. I've been covering the horse for a while. I've been writing his races. I know that. Punters that really know what they're talking about studying their form, they know about it. But the general public have no idea. And it's terrible. It looks awful for racing. Was there a coincidence that it was 8.20 at night and there was one race left on a 10-race card? I'm not not (laughs) suggesting that the strike was in his car. He's probably on the train. But he's not there, is he? Because there's no way that that should have left, been left uncovered. <laughs> well, that is a very frustrating thing as a punter, isn't it, as well? For, for most punters, they, they, if they do see something like that, then an explanation goes a long way, yeah. doesn't it? Just, just that transparency, just to get that, say, oh, well, we've looked into this. People and saying they've laid it and things like that, and they, they genuinely believe that the jockey is against this. You know, this is like the horse was not to sixteen going into the race. It's a race he had to win. Now Royston got it wrong. You know, the, he should have gone through the gap. It was, but these things happen. It's much better to be called inept and a fool than it is to be called corrupt, isn't it? But they've not had the voice or the chance or the body looking after them to, to look. You know, not throw them under the bus. <laughs> Sounds like this horse might be the sort of horse that the, the jockeys might go. Oh, don't fancy riding that one next. <laughs> it's time. a cross country horse, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, Arnold, if you're out there, you can make it right next time. But BHA, have a word with yourselves. What a Sunday we've got lined up for you then at the Cara. Most importantly, it's the Irish St. Ledger meeting. Preceding that, it is the National State Group 1. Of course, Pinatubo won it last year. Godolphin have got representation. Is this the best two-year-old race of the season so far? It looks it. It looks a good race, doesn't it? I don't think we're we're having an outstanding crop of juveniles this, this year. This could change that. Though, don't think it? there's a pin or two bow in it. Put it that way. But Master of the Seas is the Godolphin horse, isn't it? Yeah. It was third in the betting on the anti post by Lucky Vega, who won the Group One there as he pleased last time for Jesse Harrington and Shane Foley, and also Battleground, the big white hope now for uh, Bally Doyle. Does he beat them? I think he probably will. Uh, Master of the Seas, he's my idea of the winner. Uh, I think he, he's won nice, isn't he, twice at Newmarket. And They've I got think the same the, race he posed rating him in Battleground, 1-1-1, one, 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 haven't they? Lucky mm, Vega slightly out of that. The trip, isn't it? Too. That's the thing here, mm. because Lucky Vega obviously has got the, the best line, form. Though, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. He looked very good, but it's a bit different, isn't it? Uh, running over seven furlongs and staying against proper seven got furlong horses. Uh, rather than beating six furlong horses and looking to stay at six furlongs against yeah. sprinters, which we, we, we're going to find out here, aren't we? Is Lucky Vega a sprinter? Can he make the step up to the, to the 2,000 guineas next year? Um, um, uh, if he stays seven at, at two, you'll think he'd get a mile next year for yeah, the, for you the would, guineas. You would think you? so. I looked at his pedigree. It's further on the damn side, I think. Lucky Vega for you, Bobby, or are you going to go for the Godolphin yourself? Hey, Godolphin myself, gents, yeah, massive of the season, as you've already alluded to, you know, two from two, pressed me last time out in that group two, uh, superlative stage, both wins, of course, uh, at Newmarket as well, and I think it's got a, a really good chance of, of going in here for, for Charlie Appleby, so for me, respecting the opposition, respecting Lucky Vega, respecting Battleground as well, uh, my selection for this, uh, without a shadow of a doubt, Huge confidence, mass of the seas to make it the perfect three from three. What makes it a great race? The two gents with me on the panel are going for Master of the Seas, Godolphin taking out the second year running. I'm confident about Battleground. Still don't think we've seen the best of him. He's a three year old running against two year olds. That means that Lucky Vega might well drift. If you're wondering where Pat Cooney is, we couldn't tear him away from running that mile six on the town moor again. Unbelievable things. Pat, Pat Cooney is a loony. What a card it is then at the Cara on Sunday. And I guess the feature race, interestingly enough, is the Irish St. Ledger. Now, first of all, most lots of you will out there will know it's not a classic. It's all different age races can go to this. And it's strange timing this in the calendar, isn't it? We've got our St. Ledger, for example, a horse of Joseph O'Brien. Joseph O'Brien holds the key to this race as well, by the way, on Sunday. He could have taken a Galileo Chrome for this. It was entered, wasn't it? But because he's got the lure of winning an actual classic, he's gone over to Doncaster, of course. <laughs> this is a strange race, isn't it? Is there... Sometimes we get a bit disappointed when 
raises are upgraded, you know, and downgraded, but surely the pattern committee are hovering over this, aren't they? We've got a seven-year-old, Twilight Bayman, who I love for the race, by the way, absolutely trained to perfection, great horse, but it's amazing that he's favourite, isn't it? Well, yeah, it is, but he was massively impressive when he won last time. Why, over the course eight, of eight distance. Eight over the course of but, distance. I but, mean, but gee, where, are the, where are the star stayers for this race? It's been a long time since one went for it, hasn't it? Yeah, it, it, it's been a weird race for a long time, hasn't it? It's just, it, it, like you said, it falls at, at the same time as the English St. Ledger, which makes it difficult for any English runners going over. Yeah. You're just going to stay at home, aren't you, and go Never to Never going to happen. And... Um, then you essentially end up with a bunch of old horses running in it. And if there's no superstar stayer around... Yeah. Well, there is an English horse that's gone over it, a British horse, I should say, Fujiara Prince, who's the e-ball winner, who's, I mean, again, he's a bit... How old is he? Six-year-old. He's only run like six times, isn't he, or something like that. He has obviously been trained to perfection himself as well by Roger Berry this year. Can an e-ball go and shake it up over there? Well, it's an interesting runner, isn't he? Um, for sure. In a group one, straight out the e-ball. Um, can't remember the last time that happened. But got an Irish Derby winner in Sovereign. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no enable here. Will he stay Sovereign? I don't know. So Fugera, looks like a state. Fugera Prince won the, the Ebo, and the Ebo is quite a strong race, wasn't it? I mean, uh, that also you can Glenn was yeah, fifth in this, come out and won since. Uh, but that, of course, is then handicap form translating to Group One. But they're not like you're saying here, Dave. It's not a strong Group One, yeah. is it? So is it really playing? a Group One? Where are you playing? I think that you've got to try and get into Joseph O'Brien's head here, haven't you, really? Because he's got all of these stayers and he's been sitting there saying, well, he must have been going, well, shall I run Galileo over Chrome here? Shall I put Twilight Payment here? You know, I just think that he's run Galileo Chrome in England, possibly, because he thinks he's going to win the Irish Ledger anyway. No master of reality who could have gone for he this. could have run that. But he can't beat Twilight Payment, can he? Yeah. So I just think, well, even though he might be seven and whatever, I just think maybe Joseph thinks he's got... The right one here. Yeah. Why not? Why not run all the others? He's not. Seems to bother Master Reality. I thought had a huge chance. If he's not running it, then he must think Twilight Payment will win. Yeah, I agree. Twilight Payment wins. Bobby Beavers. Yeah, I think Twilight Payment is the the, the rightful favourite here, as, as you mentioned there. Over over C and D was, was very impressive last time out beating Master of Reality. But you know, as as you said, it, it's not the the strongest of of Group Ones we're going to see. And I really do like look of Fajeria Prince, as you say. He's, he's, he's only a six year old. You know, with what we've seen this year, because remember, he won that uh, decent handicap at the Royal Meeting as well. He he won the e ball. I, I can't remember the last time uh, this happened to, to win the e ball and go for the Irish St. Ledger. So, listen, they, they wouldn't go all that way uh, over the pond if, if they didn't think that they had an outstanding chance. And you know what? They probably looked at this race and thought, we're going to send him because it's winnable. It is a winnable race. We can send him over. He can get the job done and we can win the Irish St. Ledger. I think it speaks volumes. Just to emphasise, impressed me last time out in the Ebor. I think he goes there and he gets the job done. It's interesting because he, it, there are lots of people who are screaming at the, at the screens now saying, well, this has probably been a group horse and a handicap all along. You know, Ascot takes it out and, and Ebor as well. But is he a group one horse? Is this really a group one race? Right then, time to bring in the guys at MyRacing.com. Check out their website, expert analysis and tips as well. Look at Twitter, rather big following on there. They've had a really good year as well. The double they're going for, G. Alenak in the 205, so Michael Stout, slightly easier assignment for him at Chester. And at Doncaster, I have to look down, it's the three o'clock, of course it's three o'clock. It's one master for William Haggis, who has a real public following, doesn't she? Is she, is she gonna have her ground though? Did Goodwood, when she won there, just dispel that theory? Yeah, she seems to be at her best on really soft ground, don't she? But that was a, that was a fantastic performance uh, at York when she finished second behind Safe Voyage in a race that definitely wasn't yeah. going to suit her. You know, they they crawled in that she race. She got out too and, late, didn't she? And she just she got going too late, but she was flying. I mean, she made up a lot of ground from the back, and nothing else got into that race apart from Safe Voyage and the other front runner and herself. So that was a big upgrade in form. I wouldn't be massively worried about the grounds. It doesn't go really, really quick. I think she'll be fine on it. Doncaster's usually a track that um, that has good ground anyway. I think they'll yeah. be fine. It is pretty much the fairest track in Britain. Um, the other race, the Alinac race, is of course just a match between Alinac and um, Mirando, really. It looks a match between Not the Not the first two. time they've lined up. Now, I, I've been a big fan of Mirando all season. I backed him last time. He's disappointing behind Hookham. A horse that also wants the ground, we think. Yeah, and the Jeffrey Freer. So if Hookham does win the, win the, win the ledger... I'll be, that would be a you know that would be a good boost for um, uh, Mirando, but um, I think Mirando's running before it, isn't it? So he is two and five. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. All right, he's talking no sense for once, so maybe not the first time. Right then, time for the weekend for time. I'm going to take the floor, boys, if you don't mind. It is 4:45 at Leopardstown. 
the big mile race there. Safe Voyage, love Safe Voyage. He's going to be just about favourite, I think. Century Dream, lovely win at, at Goodwood. The ground is going to be all wrong for those two. And certainly Safe Voyage, he does have stamina to prove as well. This will go to Aidan O'Brien, Lancaster House, Ryan Moore. Your mate, Ryan Moore. He's going to take out loads of races and put your face in it this weekend, isn't he? <laughs> Get on Lancaster House. Right. Yeah, that, that would be difficult. I could see that happening, actually. <laughs> Ten time for Ryan Moore. <laughs> Uh, 3.45 at Chester um, on Saturday. It's Ready Freddy Go. Uh, obviously got a great name, but uh, it can run as well. All this uh, top class racing, you've looked at <laughs> Chester, I love it. Yeah, no, uh, he's got loads of pace this horse. You know, made all the last two starts and uh, this is going to suit him. He's out in stall five, but it's only a small field. I think he could get that far out, Chester, fly around there and uh, win nicely. Ready Freddy Go. Almost as well named as Bobby Beavers. Give us a winner, Bobby. Yeah, I'm sticking to my guns here, uh, gents. I'm going to go with, with Pile Driver. I gave a, a good case why I think he'll go on and win the Centre uh, Ledger this year. So for me, I'm all over Pile Driver to keep defining uh, the odds, showing what he's all about. And I'm very much excited about this one. So for me, it's all about Pile Driver. That is my nap. Class rising to the fore there, Bobby Beavers. Pat Cooney, give us a win up. I'm off to Linkfield for the five o'clock and it's number eight, King's Knight. Now, this is Charlie Hills, Rab Haflin riding it. The reason I'm napping him, Dave, he won from stall 13 of 13 at Beverly. Normally, you turn up with a vet certificate when you're drawn in 13 at that trip at Beverly. Not this fella. Ben Curtis fired him out the traps. He made all. It was a terrific performance to win. He was 78 before the race. He's only gone up to 80. I think that's a steal. So King's Knight, and he's better drawn this time around. So no vet certificate retired in, in this time around. So we're off to Lingfield for our one. It's the first time for everything on this show. Coherent arguments all around the tracks. We're confident. Right then, time to sign off here on What A Shout. Another great week. Thank you, Graham Wobbray, for coming back in. Uh, really confident about the weekend going forward? I'm hopeful. What's the, what's the name of the horse at Chester? It's called Ready Freddy Go. Ready Freddy Go. Well-named horse. To a well-named presenter, Bobby Beavers. Thanks for joining us this week. Thanks for giving us the exact feeling of what it felt like on Townmore on Wednesday. We wish you well, Bobby. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you for watching out there. Don't forget, you can get the questions in for Bobby, Graham, or indeed Pat Cooney, the loony, whichever way you want to go. YouTube, Facebook, hashtag what a shout. Don't forget, you can download the free Racing Post app on the App Store or the free Google Store as well. Gamble responsibly. So many races to aim at. Hone in, target it, don't go mad. This is me, Dave Orton, signing off on What a Shout. Mm -hmm.